Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Perry Jeanette. I'm a senior solution architect with Amazon Elastic File System. I'm here today to discuss scaling performance for containers using Amazon ECS with Amazon EFS. So what is Amazon EFS? Amazon EFS is a cloud native file system that integrates with all types of compute, whether that's in the cloud or on-prem to optimize customers' workloads. So when we think about EFS, we think about it from a builder's perspective. And builders are looking to leverage a storage solution that just works. They don't want to understand the nuts and bolts behind the storage solution. So we think of Amazon EFS having four different superpowers. First and foremost, it's configuration free, meaning it's a fully managed service. So once you create the file system, Amazon really manages the back end of that. Number two, it's fully elastic. So you only pay for what you use, whether you have zero bytes in your file system or up to petabytes in your file system. Number three, it's accessible from anywhere, meaning it, any sort of compute from AWS or on-prem can connect and use the resources available with Amazon EFS. And number four, it's cost optimized without any effort, meaning lifecycle management is part of EFS and will tier your data to optimize your costs. Now, let's move to a demo where we show the integration of Amazon ECS with Amazon EFS and how simple it is to integrate. Within the EFS console, we're gonna click Create File System. From here, we can actually just go ahead and click the orange Create button to create the file system. I clicked the Customize, so you can see the different options we have available when creating an EFS file system, like the network group and the fact that we're gonna create a mount target, an EFS mount target per AZ. Once we click Create here, you'll see how incredibly fast it is to create an EFS file system. And before I actually type in ECS, you can see that the file system was created. Within ECS console, we're gonna go ahead and create a cluster, a task definition, and then ultimately we're gonna run that task. So we'll give it a name of serverless demo. And again, under networking, you'll see that we are going to be in the same AZs as we just created our EFS file system. And that's incredibly important because each one of the containers will mount locally to a local mount target within, uh, within each AZ. We'll create the task definition. Um, we'll give it a name. And then as we go down, we can change any of the, the settings here. But essentially, we're just going to put in an ECR URI and give it a name. After we click Next, again, we can change any of the variables. We're gonna leave those all as default, and we're gonna focus on adding a volume. We're gonna click EFS to add an EFS volume. This volume name is locally significant. So once we create that, we'll click down and we'll select the file system that we just created. We'll give it a root directory, and then we're gonna actually add a mount point. And you'll see the, the container the source volume, and then the container path. This is again, a locally significant path. Once we cl click next and we create this, we can immediately go ahead and launch the task. Once we've launched that task, we can actually create uh, one to as many containers as you would like uh, when we create the task here. And once we create this task and it's launched, we'll go in and show you the configuration from an EFS perspective. So we'll click on the container and you can see that we've mounted the EFS file system inside the container. Welcome back from the demo. Um, just to finish up the presentation, we're, we, have a com we offer a comparison between Amazon EBS and EFS for persistent storage. As you can see, we're looking at four different categories. The first is storage and performance management. With Amazon EFS, it is fully elastic and you only pay for what you need, meaning there's no pre-provisioning and paying for storage that you don't need. Number two is availability and durability. 
with Amazon EFS, you get multi AZ as a standard with 11 nines of a durability from a data cycle or sorry, a data life cycle and cost optimization perspective, it's built directly into EFS and simple to turn on. And the last is regional replication. Within EFS, we can enable replication within a region or cross region with an RPO of about 15 minutes. That's why we would recommend leveraging containers with Amazon EFS. Thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your day at Serverless Innovation Day.